look, I heard that Harper Lee based the character Scout on herself, Dill on Truman Capote, and Atticus on her own father, who was also a lawyer. I wonder who Boo Radley was based on. I'm sure it was her subconscious. What? That's ridiculous. No, no, think about it. Boo Radley was in some deep, dark place, only to come out to do things that were unspoken. Taboo. Murder. Is that right? Yeah. I think there's some Boo Radley in you. In all of us. There's no Boo Radley in me. Sure there is. No, there's not. Yes, there is Boo Radley in you. <laughs> I see it in your eyes, I, I, I promise you. <laughs> the, my eyes are windows to the grassy plains of peace and tranquility. Yeah, right. Come on. There is Boo Radley in you. <laughs> well, you look like Boo Radley. <laughs> right. Let's go have a beer. All right. I love the book. I, I'm just not a big fan of Atticus Fetch. How can you not love Atticus Finch? Uh, he was a hypocrite. You are insane. How uh, can you say that? Well, well, he tells his children never to kill a mockingbird, right? Yeah. And, and then he ends up taking his rifle and shooting this poor sick dog right out in the middle of the street in cold blood. He shoots his dog in cold blood. Hey, I heard that Harper Lee and Truman Capote were childhood friends. What, what, <laughs> what does that have to do with Atticus Finch being a hypocrite? Nothing. But you said the dog was shot in cold blood. It just reminded me of Capote. Well, Truman Capote would never have shot a dog in the street. You've read To Kill a Mockingbird, right? Absolutely. It's my favorite book. Oh, mine too. So, so um, last week I gave the book to my daughter to read and she read it yeah. in like two days. You're kidding. She's so smart. And so we're having dinner and she said to me, I wish I had a father like Atticus. Really? <laughs> and so, so what does that say about me? Is, is, is she saying I'm a bad father? No, I think you're looking into it too deeply. Yeah, I'm a good father. Absolutely. You're no Atticus Fetch, but you're good. Hey, wait, wait, hold. Oh, what is that supposed to mean? Atticus Fetch was one of the all-time greats. <laughs> I'm great. I'm a great father. Hey, sure on, you are, on. but hey, you're... Wait. Hold, hold on a minute. I, I, I gotta call you back, okay? Bye bye. You're no Atticus Finch. <laughs> I hear the county's cutting millions from education. Yeah, isn't it sad? We spend billions on defense, yet education has to take a back seat. Education gets no respect in this country. Personally, I think that the best defense against tyranny is an educated populace. I thought the best defense against tyranny was a well-armed populace. No, I don't agree with that. But education, now that is the cornerstone to progress. Well, then our future doesn't look very bright, does it? No, come on, don't say that. Right, man, they're cutting funds from education. So what? Let them cut funds. It doesn't mean that our children are getting dumber. I don't know. Okay, let's say you want to read a book, but you don't have enough money to buy one. What do you do? I don't know. I watch TV instead. No, you go to the library and you check one out for free. Well, they're cutting money from the library's budget, too. Yep, they are. So they may not even have the book I'm looking for. No, you read a different one. The library has thousands to choose from from over there. Uh, who, who has time to read anymore anyway? You know, my dad used to say that money breeds laziness. W what are you talking about? Okay, let's say that you want to build a playground, but you don't have enough money to do so. What do you do? Playgrounds are good. Instead of building, let's say, a set of monkey bars or uh, a big swing set made of gold, you make this <laughs> sandbox instead. Now, let me show you something. You make this circular clearing for a game of marbles. You can build benches with chess boards instead. Mm. The kids still get to play, and it's far cheaper than monkey bars. Let me tell you about the monkey bars. When I was in the second grade, I fell off a set and almost busted my head wide open. So, so that's how we got this brain damage here. Now I got the brain damage from talking to you. Ah, I see. Well, th th this uh, theory of yours. Theory? What theory? This, this I don't need money to accomplish goal theory. Yeah. Uh, you, it's got holes in it. Okay. 
let's, let's say that I wanted to take a trip to Paris. I wanted to go to Paris and get a little culture. Yeah, but I don't have it. the money to to buy my plane ticket. What am I supposed to do? Swim? No, 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 no. You still get to Paris. You buy that plane ticket. You just don't stay in the five-star hotel. So where am I supposed to stay? In a hostel. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, you're going to just use it for sleep anyway. If you're going to be in Paris, you better be out exploring that city instead of being laying around in some hotel. Now, that, now that depends on who I'm uh, with. <laughs> okay, it's all about the experience. What you're going to take in with your mind, your eyes, your heart, the art that you're gonna see, the people that you're going to meet. I mean, money can't buy that. You know what the bottom line is? You choose what you want to do. If you want a good education, you go out and find that education. You may not be fortunate enough to go to a school with lots of money. You may not have the teachers passionate about teaching, but you can go out and educate yourself. Money isn't the answer. It's not the answer to progress. Well, I. I...